Welcome to the event report for Stuart Smallbots of Mass Destruction from September 2016. This is either Stuart Smallbots of Mass Destruction 2 or 3, depending on how you're counting it. I think it's the third one ever held, but it's the second one in, I guess, this incarnation of it. I technically competed at this event with two robots, Gorgor coming fresh off its semi-final placing at Dragon Con 2016, an Electric Eye, which got a last-minute rebuild from the previous version since I had some traction issues, and by nature of being a last minute rebuild, I did not fix those traction issues. There's a third robot here on the screen, though I'm having trouble fitting them all on my backdrop here. That is what was supposed to compete as the new version of Neanderthal Roomba. I ended up not getting it completed in time and actually finishing it at the event. So while it didn't compete in the normal tournament, I did toss it in for the Antweight Rumble. First up, we'll take a look at Electric Eye. And when I say last minute rebuild, you can clearly see that I did not do a great job with this one. It is really just a piece of Garolite with the electronics strapped to it and then a paint roller cover case or whatever you want to call it with gaffer tape stuck on top. The robot definitely needs a new rebuild for the next event, a, a well done rebuild. Its first fight was against Micro Sparky, which is a brushless nightmare. I think it's two outrunners that are just running as the wheels and then another outrunner powering a weapon blade. And Micro Sparky got right into the sensitive bit right up here in front where the fork is. And you can actually see the electrical tape here on these connectors. He saw it right through those connectors and unplugged my battery, leading to a pretty instantaneous loss. Electric Eye's second fight was against Mustachio, which is one of the Team Busted Nuts Robotics 150 gram bots. They seem to have about half the field at any event lately with these guys. They let one of the kids from the audience drive the robot, and I was doing okay. I was able to get under them. I was able to flip them over a few times, even though the fork wasn't really doing it because I had some weight distribution issues and the robot was really tipping forward every time I tried to lift, which would end up being the source of my demise. I got knocked over on my back, and from what I can tell I think I tried to flip the robot back over but went the wrong way with the lifting arm or went too far with the lifting arm it's just on a motor so it can go theoretically 360 degrees and it's obviously limited by the structure of the robot itself and it went too far back there's a little screw back here on the hub for the motor that got caught on the frame itself and then it got caught on some wires as well so electric guy ended up upside down with the fork pointing straight down which is not a configuration it's supposed to be in and I could spin the wheels I could wobble the fork back and forth but I wasn't able to get it to right itself so that ended up being my second knockout of the day with electric eye if there was 150 gram robot rumble I missed it but I don't think one ever actually happened and honestly it's probably for the better because I don't think this design would have worked too well with that as I already mentioned it had traction issues on the previous version because there wasn't much weight over the wheels here it kind of high centered itself pretty easily and you can kind of see why the design is just overall not particularly good. I have plans for the new version of it. I do want to keep with this setup because I really like the lifting fork, especially for 150 gram bot. I just got to get the bugs taken out of it. So on to the really fun one, Gorgor. Gorgor has gotten beat up at events before. The first version got shredded by Best Korea up at Clash of the Bots earlier this year. The second incarnation of the last Stuart Small Bots of Mass Destruction got pretty beat up by Trilobiter, though it was pretty much still working after that. I honestly don't even know why it died in that fight. Everything seemed to still be operational. Though I did find when I rebuilt it for Dragon Con that there were a few places where I hadn't been quite so meticulous with the wiring and motors and other things were shorting to the frame. So it could just have been something like that was exposed and it just locked up my electrical system. But after the Dragon Con rebuild, I was pretty confident that had been taken care of. I had Loctited a lot of things together. I had made sure this robot was about as solid as it could get. The only real piece that wasn't at 100%, or at least as 100% as it has been on the spot, was this front piece of armor. I just was never able to get it to really reattach. I didn't have time to rebuild the mounting system for it. But everything else I was pretty confident about. My first fight was against Lubox, which is a tombstone style horizontal spinner. And when the fight first started, I wasn't really sure if the weapon was able to get up to speed. I was kind of having flashbacks to the Kiss Knot fight from Dragon Con, where I was kind of hoping the spinner wouldn't have as much power as it ended up having, but it was able to do a number on Gorgor, and to be quite honest, I'm not entirely sure what is courtesy of that robot. The head was ripped off. Obviously, you can see he's no longer attached. 
These were the mounting blocks. They would sit here on these hubs to hold the upper jaws. I had drilled too close to the edge on these holes and it just ripped the bottom out of them. You can see the screws are bent as well. And they're just pretty beat up and I wasn't able to ever get these reattached in a way that I could feel like the robot was going to function again correctly. Also, if you look here on the axle on Gorgor's upper jaw, you can see it is a little bit bent. Not a lot, but it is quarter inch steel, so that was pretty impressive. The entire front end of the robot got ripped off. The servo for the lifting mechanism was actually destroyed in the process. You can see there's some nice gashes here in the quarter inch aluminum frame rails. There's a frame rail back here that holds the servo in place, and the impacts actually ripped that out of the bot. But that was just a UHMW piece, I think it just kind of ripped the bolts out of it. Without watching the fights, I'm trying to remember what else happened. I know I lost a tire, I believe. A lot of bolts just came out of alignment. Things popped out of place. And yeah, it was just not a good time for Gorgor. I can't remember the reason the robot actually got knocked out. Once again, it probably could have been a short somewhere. I know the front motor here on the right had its wires disconnected. I think maybe one or two other places had wires come undone, but it was definitely some significant damage to the bot. I took it back to the pits, basically rebuilt it from scratch. I decided to toss the head away because there was no way at an event I was going to get those supports rebuilt, and even if I did, I wasn't sure if I could get the upper jaw functioning the way it was supposed to again. So I went into the second fight just running my lifting forks, my bottom jaw. Though I did add one extra weapon just for the lols of it. I actually picked up a rake just because I thought it was hilarious. The raking is just one of my favorite robot combat moments in a long time, so I stuck a bright green plastic rake on the back of the robot just because I thought it was funny and because the robot was underweight to begin with and now was significantly underweight when it was lacking probably at least half a pound of upper jaw. My second fight was against Loco, which was a wedge with a horizontal spinner on one end, and I was actually very happy with how Gorgor performed in that fight, especially after kind of rebuilding it from scratch and really having to put a lot of work to get it moving again. Gorgor was able to go across the ring, get its lower jaw underneath the robot, pick it up, and drag it into the pit. I think the whole fight lasted about 14 seconds, which I think was actually kind of the record for the fastest knockout of the day for a little while up until the finals or semifinals. So I was really happy that that worked. I still took Gorgor back to the pits. I did some more work on it, tried to fix a couple more bugs going on in it, make sure everything was nice and secure for the next fight, which was supposed to be against Sawmill, which was a robot I was supposed to fight last Stuart Small Bots of Mass Destruction and wasn't able to because they couldn't get it working. And that happened again, unfortunately. One day we'll get to fight that robot. I really want to now that it's been kind of denied to me twice. But as irony would have it, since I stuck the rake on the robot, my next fight was against Herpaderp, which is also another fight I didn't get at the last event that I was supposed to have. And it's also Will from Hypershock's Beetleweight. And it's basically a little mini two-wheeled Hypershock. And I'd seen that robot at Clash of the Bots, and it was pretty gnarly then. This time, it seems like he really got it dialed in and working really, really well. And once again, managed to disassemble Gorgor. And while Lubot's hits were all horizontal base. These, of course, were vertical attacks. You can see the base plate here, which is 16th inch 6061 aluminum, got bent pretty badly. The frame itself is now all coming apart. A lot of kind of disconnected pieces. The jaws are pretty much limp. The servo is cracked apart again. So that's the second servo I went through in this event. And he actually caught my battery cables somehow and ripped them straight out of the battery, which was awesome. And that's what did Gorgor in this fight without battery connection, of course, there was no way it was going to keep going. It was a pretty quick and pretty spectacular knockout. I didn't even bother trying to get Gorgor working again for the rumble. It was just way more work that I wanted to put into it. Plus, I was already planning to completely rebuild this robot. I have ideas for a more precise version of it, hopefully a more durable version of it. At this point, I just didn't really feel like it was worth the time to try to rebuild it and get it working again. And last but not least is Neanderthal Roomba, which is a robot I built Thursday night before the event mostly and then finished and got actually running at the event itself. It didn't compete in one-on-one -on -one combat but it did enter the one pound rumble where it didn't do particularly well because this wedge is a little too low and got stuck in the seams 
everywhere in the arena. I got stuck in the wall two or three times and I got stuck in the center of the floor at the very end of the fight. I think in the wall again actually at the very end of the fight. Part of the problem was also that I only had one motor working. Originally that was the reason why the robot didn't compete was because I could only get one drive motor working. They were both actually spinning but one just wasn't engaging. I found out when I went and opened up the motor that the pinion on the brushless motor was set in too deep and wasn't actually engaging with the gears in the gearbox so I did fix that. But what I forgot was that the radio connectors, and I never felt like I had this problem back when I was building years ago. It feels like a recent, like, cheapness in parts. But the cables, the PWM cables that go into the receiver, don't seem to stay in. You actually have to glue them in place to keep them from just sliding out on their own. And I forgot before throwing it into the rumble that I needed to glue them down and fix it. And by the time... I got in the box and realized that I wasn't able to control one of the motors. It just didn't seem worth it to waste everybody else's time while I went and got a screwdriver and opened this thing up and glued the cable down and all that garbage. But I did have it running in the pits previously and this thing was really squirrely. I might have to mess with the firmware a little bit to get these brushless motors working the way I want them to because one of the motors seemed to lag when going forward. So if when I had mixing on, if I hit up on the control stick, it would basically turn and then eventually kind of drift which definitely isn't good especially with a push bot i ended up moving the cables since i already have spring return on my left stick anyway so i decided to use two stick drive which made it a little easier to control so i can kind of not go all the way with the right stick and give the left stick a little more power but i let a couple other people test drive it too just to see what i was talking about and they agreed it was a little strange to drive and i know i'm gonna have to do some work with this to get it driving with mixing on because i do want to eventually use these motors for gorgor version 2 or version 3 or whatever you want to call it but if I can't drive in a straight line that's going to be bad so that's my Stuart small bots of mass destruction September 2016 event report definitely have a lot of work to do in the next month or so before the Orlando Maker Fair event I would like to get all three of these robots running in all new versions of them Gorgor most likely is going to end up being CNC or water jet electric eye I'm thinking maybe trying to get a 3d printed chassis for and Neanderthal Roomba I don't don't know yet i'll have to figure that one out i know i definitely need to downsize the battery because a thousand milliamp hour is way overkill for something like this but despite my lackluster showing great event great people i love that arena that arena is so nicely made and despite a couple seams and gaps in it it's probably one of the nicest insect weight arenas i've seen in a long time